Wildlife are often earth coloured for camouflage, so I find I use a lot of burnt sienna and yellow ochre. Let's add a third, Prussian blue, and paint a sketch like the springbok. Loading the brush with the burnt sienna, and do you see on this rougher paper how sometimes the tooth almost ignores the brush stroke? But it also leaves a lovely broken edge coming down the neck. It's that broken edge of the brush stroke that is often so lovely. Seeing the shape of the animal, because when you're out there in the wild, these creatures move fast. You've got to be observant. And when one animal moves on, use another animal to re-get what you need to carry on the pose. They all end up in similar poses. You can use a whole herd of, a whole herd of springbok to paint one, one springbok. What you want to do is get the colours blending, wet in wet. And the rougher the paper, the wetter it will stay for the longer. A bit blue there. Let's come down here. Lovely white bottoms. bit of the yellow ochre just to warm up and then mixing that Prussian blue and the burnt sienna together to get these darks across the back of the haunches here and into where the little tail comes out. The darks of the ears and these lovely curved horns. Again, the tip of the brush, so important. And then you need that lovely dark stripe, the trademark of the springbok. Almost neat burnt sienna, catching the wash while it's still wet, coming in and tracing the markings. And then just a little touch on the top of the head for where the eyes are. But you don't need very much, just let it run, a little bit of darkness there. And perhaps a little trace down the leg just to indicate some movement. But you need very light strokes. You don't need feet, you don't need hooves. Just a little bit to just indicate where those legs might be. And while the wash is still wet, just a little bit of darkness under the back of the springbok. And if it's, if it's dried, then just a bit of water on your brush to blend it down into the leg. And then you can just put that darkness back in to the wetted wash. And a little touch just where a band of colour at the top of the head and coming down to the spring box nose. And just soften it off with a clean brush. And just a little bit of that yellow ochre just in under the tummy to give a little glow where the lovely colour of the sand brings a glow to the underbelly of the spring box. So with three colours, you have even more versatility. The techniques of watercolour are perfect for painting the mottled and patterned markings of wildlife. Look at the markings on these jackal, how the black back blends into the paler body. Wet and wet watercolour can create the same effect. Again, a brush loaded with burnt sienna, good old burnt sienna. Nice wet watercolour. Get the overall shape of the little fellow in fast as you can. Tail coming down the back there. Little nose. And then I'm going to use ultramarine blue this time because ultramarine blue together with burnt sienna make a very nice black. Mix the two colours together and let that colour merge into the underlying wash to create that lovely dark black back of the black back jackal. And again, slightly neater colour where you want your real darks, like the black of the tail here and the black of the nose into the black inside the ears. And then that little black of the eye, but we just would be dotting it just about there. And a tiny touch of burnt sienna to strengthen up the ear. 
little shadow on the ground. One black bat jackal looking for food. The patterns on the neck of this giraffe are painted just before the wash dries so that the edges are softened but don't spread unevenly into the underlying wash. Watercolour added at just the right moment makes the spots and markings on these cheetah. If you add the colour to the wet wash too soon, it will spread uncontrollably. If you add the watercolour too wet, it will add too much water to the wash and it will spread out unevenly. Remember there's already water on the paper still held in the previous wash. So you only need to add a touch of almost neat pigment and let it fan out gently. The drier your colour, the less it will fan out. Of course, if you wait too long, it will not spread at all. The actual colour of the fur of the cheetah under the spots is very pale. So I'm diluting the yellow ochre right down and painting it all over the head, even into those lovely amber eyes. And while that wash is still wet, just letting the lovely orangey colour of the top of his head blend in to that yellow ochre. Using the Prussian blue again to just darken him up. Don't want it to go too green. And now I want to bring in those lovely sepia markings before this wash gets too dry. And the best place is to test it out in a place where it can afford to spread a little bit. So not in your main sort of central area. Under the mouth here, it's quite a wide margin of sienna of sepia, so you can see how far the watercolour is spreading. Now these lovely spots. Don't just add them at random. Try and see how they make the shape of the body, where they're actually situated. The markings are very special on these animals. The longer you observe them, the more you observe them before you start painting, the more likely you are to have them roughly where you want them. And if you find that the paint is getting too dry, just add a little bit more water, just a touch, not too much, because you don't want it to run all over the place. Just a little bit more water into your sepia wash so that it helps spread the paint a little bit. Sometimes the patterns are crisp edged like the stripes on the zebra. For an edge to be crisp in watercolour, the underwash must be dry before painting. This technique is known in watercolour as wet on dry. And I'm going to use it now to paint the stripes on this zebra with a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, two colours that go beautifully together to make a black as we've seen already. And again, we need that lovely sharp point of the sable brush to make sure our lines are crisp edged. And you'll see how the actual lines will create the form of the zebra as well. The versatility of the brush enables you to start fine and then make it wider as it comes down and narrower. Sable brushes take a long time to learn to make. I think something like five years that the people who make these take to train 
to actually learn how to make the brushes. And it's not for nothing that that training takes so long. Within the shape of this brush is the ability to make any mark you need. And the sable brush also holds a lot of paint. So you see I haven't had to reload my brush for quite a few stripes. Now I'm going in to load my brush again and being careful to make the stripes create the form of the body. That wonderful tip can be used both at the beginning of the stroke and at the end of the stroke. And then just under the tail, we can use that same darkness. Always make sure you've got clean water at hand any time that you want to spread a wash out. And then let's just nose a nice bit of dry brush for the swish of this tail. And then the stripes have created the form. I hope these sketches and paintings have whetted your appetite, both for painting in watercolour and for travelling in Africa. The techniques involved are just as relevant to painting in your own backyard. Dogs and cats are able substitutes for jackals and lions. The main thing to remember is to use the animated stroke of the brush, the ease of a limited palette, the courage to paint on the hoof, just as timing is crucial to the predator, so it is in watercolour. The right colour, added at the right moment, in the right place, does not in itself take very long, but the preparation for that moment takes much longer. Wait and think before you touch the paper with the brush. More paintings are ruined by impatience than anything else. Left alone, watercolour will do lovely things for you. Lay it and leave it, and resist the urge to fiddle. end of any good day in Africa, the sun paints the sky with amazing colours. If you try to chase those colours, if you try to chase the sun, you will change your mind and the painting continually. Rather, wait till the sun has gone down, often the best colours still to come. Using just three colours, a brush and a sponge, let's paint the end to a perfect African day. Now available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. The extended version of today's workshop is now available to order on DVD from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.